fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Old Dave Knox and his daughter Daisy were within five days of the railhead when they neared the trail town of Clinton Springs with their herd of a thousand steers. Behind them were 300 hot miles of dust, hardship, and hostile Indians. And the old man breathed easier as he called for a halt and prepared to make camp. Well, Daisy, the worst is over. In another five days, we'll have this beef aboard a steam train heading east. It's been a long, hard trip, Dad. I'm glad for your sake that it's almost over. It'll be worth what it took to get there. We'll get $20 ahead on delivery. Well, here comes Curly Matt. Oh, oh, yeah. How are things going, Curly? Steady. Uh, we'll have the herd in hand within an hour. Yeah. And you can put him to sleep with a lullaby. And uh, that's what I wanted to speak to you about, Mr. Knox. How do you mean, Curly? There's a town to the west of us, about six miles. Breed and I saw it yesterday when we were scouting water. What about it? Well, it's been a lonesome trip for the boys. They'd like to see some bright lights. Uh, I was uh, No, if... sir. I know what cowpokes do when they hit a trail town. They can wait five more days for a fling. We'll be at the railhead by then. But, Mr. Knox, this is just a little town. It's close by. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, Dad, let the boys go into town. Uh, it's been weeks since they've seen a soul except each other. The two Mexicans have agreed to stay in camp and keep the herd quiet till we get back. Ah, uh, doggone it, Daisy. Why do you always take sides against me? <laughs> you and the boys can go into town, Curly. Can't they, Dad? Yes. All right, uh, then. Uh, thanks, Miss Daisy. Uh, there's just one more thing, Mr. Knox. Yeah, what's that? Could you advance us a little cash for spending money? No, sir. Oh, Not this right. sense. But, it. Dad, the boys will have to spend a little if they go to town. They get paid when the herd's delivered at the railhead. And I get my money. They want to go into town, all right. But I can't pay them anything. All my cash is tied up in this herd. Why, well, must have some cash, Mr. Knox. I haven't. The boys are not going to believe that. That's up to them. Oh, very well. I'll break the bad news to them. Steady. <laughs> Get up there. Many miles west of the trail herd, 
the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion Tonto rode into a draw and halted their horses as the sun slipped beneath the rugged hills. We may camp here for the night, Tonto. We can ride toward Clinton Springs in the morning. Well, me get fire started to cook supper. Very well, I'll take care of the horses. Steady, Silver. Clinton Springs was typical of small towns that mushroomed up along the cattle trails to become a problem to cattlemen making the long drives to the railroad. It was largely populated by those who sought to prey on the reckless spending cowboys and others who sought bigger game by raiding the herds when they thought they could get away with it. Trigger Gun was one of the latter. He was seated at his favorite table in the Drover's Tavern when Joe Curd brought news of Dave Knox's herd. Here's a thousand head if there's one, Trigger. All good beef, too. How about the trail crew? The usual outfit. About ten men in all, not counting the old man and his daughter. His daughter? Yeah, he's got her along with him. He's kind of old. Reckon she looks after him. Now, when I rode by about an hour ago, the cow hands are pretty sore at the old man. Yeah? What about? Uh, he told them they could ride into town this evening, but he wouldn't advance any pay to them, and they're broke. So they'll be going back to camp early. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Fact is, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them didn't even bother to come in at all. You're wrong about that, Joe. You couldn't keep those boys in camp. They'll be here. Yeah, but we'll be taking chances if we try to raid the herd. They'll at least be sober enough to trail us when they get back to camp. I think I can keep them away from camp long enough for us to make a deal with old man Knox. A deal? You mean buy his herd? At my price. Joe, where's Nugget Smith? Nugget Smith? What do you want with him? Go find him. Tell him I want to talk with him. Curly and the rest of Knox's men were in the cafe that night. But with no cash to spend, they were having a dull time. Oh, here comes a waiter, boys. Yeah. I guess he's fed up with us taking table space without eating or drinking. Ah, uh, looks like. Hasn't anyone got a dollar? We could buy something and sit here, Spill. Uh, not, not me. I'm sorry, fellas. There's a lot of cash customers that could use that table. Yeah, oh, now, 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 listen, friend. We'll be back through here in ten days. We'll have plenty of money then. How about letting the boys have a little credit to land? Sure. I'm sorry. There's no credit here. It's cash on the barrel head. You'll have to leave. I don't oh, get the idea. Wait, 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 wait. Not so fast, my fine fellow. Uh, you keep it? out of this, bum. Do you hear that, my friends? He calls me a bum. <laughs> then let him look at this. What? No, no, no. A gold nugget and a whopper. Right you are, my friend. <laughs> And he calls me a bum. Hey, where'd you get that? Yeah. Never you mind where I got it. Bring these men what they desire. They're my guests for the evening. Oh, well, then uh, let me have that nugget. Oh, no, no, not this one. Here's one much smaller. Look at that. But mm. big enough to pay for the best in this place. Oh, what do you know? Order up, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> The cowboys from the trail camp were curious about their strange but generous host. They encouraged him to talk, and soon he was telling his secret. And to my friends, there's more gold where this came from. When news of my discovery leaks out, as it's bound to, there'll be a rush to peacock gulfs that will rival the one to California in 49. Believe me, my friends, it will indeed. Peacock gulfs, huh? Yes, my friend. And there'll be enough for all. Suppose we could stake out a few claims? Why not? Hey, hey what, what do you know about that? that? But... Do me one favor, boys. Sure. What is it? Say nothing of what I've told you. Uh -huh. Perhaps it's the good fellowship that has loosened an old man's tongue. But you've treated me like a gentleman, not like a bum. Well, and I'm glad to share my secret with you. That's why I've told you about it. So you may be the first to share my good fortune. Sure, sure. I understand. Sure. Now, if you breathe so much as a word of my secret, I might be murdered and robbed tonight as I sleep. Even you might be waylaid and killed. We'll not tell anyone. Boys, what do you say? Do we go stake out some claims? Oh, oh, sure. Right. Do old man Knox good to be left holding the bag, the stingy old cuss. Sure. Come on, let's go. Yeah, come let's on. Go. Good luck to <laughs> Well, Trigger, there they go. Old Nugget Smith's an actor, if I ever saw one. 
He could almost convince me there's gold back in Peacock Coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you uh, want me to get the boards mounted? Yeah, yeah. And Joe. Yeah, Trigger. Don't try to grab the whole herd. It can't be done. Just run off a couple of hundred and move them into Box Canyon with the rest of the critters we've got there. You said something earlier about making a deal with old man Knox. I'll take care of that in the morning. Get moving. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had been asleep for some time, though flames still flickered from the fire they had built when they made camp. Suddenly, they were wakened by a whinny from the great horse, Silver. Tonto, what, what matter, Kimosabe? Someone's riding this way. Silver heard them. Ah, uh, now me hear them. Many horses come this way. You stay here by the campfire. I'll get Silver and move into the brush where we won't be seen. If riders stop, me make talk with them. I'll stay back in the darkness and keep you covered. Come on, Silver. Come on, boys. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Oh, we saw the light from your fire and figured we'd find someone here. Well, what you want? Directions is all. How do we get to a place called Peacock Gulch? Well, that's not far from here. Go through pass, then ride north, maybe five miles. Well, thanks for help, partner. I guess we're not lost like we thought we were. Well, why you go to Peacock Gulch? Well, that's our business, Redskin. Don't let it bother you now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks and adios. Get up there. Come on. Get up. Get up. Oh. Them gone now, Kimasabi? Hello. Did you notice the brand on those horses? Ah, me see it. It Diamond Y brand. Me not know that brand. The Diamond Y Ranch is owned by an elderly man named Dave Knox. It's all of 300 miles south of here. Why, Diamond Y Cowboys, so far from ranch? I can only guess, Tonto. They must be on a trail drive to the railroad. Then why them ride to Peacock Gulch? I can't answer that. It's possible they made camp near Clinton Springs and then went into town for a spree and got into trouble of some sort. Oh. Well, me think them hide from law in Peacock Gulch. That's the only reason I can think of. But we've got to find out at once, Tonto. And what we do? We ride to the cattle trail. The diamond wire herd is there. We'll find it easy enough. No doubt Rancher Knox will be there. All right, steady. Easy, big fella. Easy, fella. One hill there. Come up, town. Dad. Dad. Dad, wake hey, up. Hey. What's the matter, dear? Something's wrong with the herd. They're starting to mill. Where's Curly and the boys? They haven't come back from town. What? Not back yet. And, and it's long after midnight. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't want them to go into town, but you made me let them go. Oh, now, Dad, this is no time to argue. Will you just uh, listen? Somebody shoot? Yes, and it must be paper. Hurry, Dad, get saddled. Uh, yep. You'll have to help this stampede. Oh, there, steady. Easy, easy now. Hey, Wait. somebody's riding in. Yes, it's Pedro. Oh, hurry, Dad. Oh, oh, oh. Senor, Senor Knox. What happened, Pedro? The rustlers. They're stealing the cows. Rustlers? They shoot at Pedro. Pedro, come for help. Well, we wouldn't stand a chance against rustlers. The best we can do is try to keep the rest of the herd from stampeding all over the county. Get mounted, Daisy. All right. Let's go, Dad. Get up there. Get up there. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Rustlers struck in the night and made off with some of Dave Knox's cattle. The remaining cattle were stampeded and scattered. Day was just breaking when the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the cattle camp. Something happened during the night, Tonto. The herd is scattered. That right. We see three men and one woman rounding up strays. We'll have to help them. Monsoon! Get them uptown! Dad, two men are riding this way. Yes, one's masked and the other's an Indian. Stop here and we'll find out what they want. Who there? Oh, who there? Who? who? I'll keep them covered. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Uh, keep your hands on your reins and state your business, mister. I'm in no mood to palaver with Al Hooch. We're not outlaws, Mr. Knox. Then who are you and what do you want? I think I can identify myself to your father, miss. Here, catch this, Mr. Knox. <laughs> uh, what's in thunder? What is it, Dad? Why, a bullet. A silver bullet. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, you called that horse Silver as you rode in. That's right, Knox. And this Indian is Toto. What's this all about, Dad? Uh, Daisy, I've often wondered if ever I got into trouble, I'd be as lucky as Jeb Stevens. What do you mean, Dad? Now I know who this man is. He's the man who helped Jeb Stevens. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Knox was eager to listen to what the masked man had to say. The Lone Ranger told about the Diamond Wire Ranch crew riding through his camp during the night. Then he and Tonto left to round up the strays. A short time after the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode away, two other riders appeared on the horizon and approached Knox and his daughter. Here come two men. Maybe they'll help us out. Good morning, James. Good morning. Looks like you're having trouble. Uh, we sure are. Somebody rustled part of my herd last night and scattered what was left. I wonder if you could help us out. Where's your range crew? They went to town. Haven't come back yet. Well, then you are in a fix, mister. Want to sell what's left uh, of the herd? Sell it? Man, I'd be about the happiest critter anywhere if I could sell out right here now. I'll pay you $5 a head for the cattle you've rounded up. $5? Well, I can get $20 a head at the railroad. But you're five days on the railroad. And you've got no range crew to handle your herd. It's up to you. Well, we'll not sell at five dollars. That's plain robbery. Well, think it over. If you change your mind, you can ride into town and let me know. I'll keep the offer open. Well, uh, what's your name in case I do change my mind? Gun's my name. You usually find me in Drover's Tavern. Let's go, Joe. Right. Get him in. Get him. Get him. Dad, with the Lone Ranger and Tonto to help us, we'd be crazy to take such an offer. With Daisy, we... We can't expect the mass man and Tonto to help us drive this herd all the way to the railroad. Oh. And anyway... Even though we've lost a lot of cattle, we'd need more help than the Lone Ranger and Tonto to move our stock. Oh, I, I may have to take that offer. Within an hour, most of the strays had been rounded up. The Lone Ranger observed that it was still a large-sized herd despite the fact that many head of cattle had been stolen. Then the masked man and Tonto joined Rancher Knox and his daughter. Who are the two men who called on you, Knox? Well, one of them was named Gun. I didn't get the other gent's name. They talk like a couple of slick operators. If it was Trigger Gun, you're right. You, you know him? Yes, and I don't know anything good about him. What did he want? He offered to buy the herd at $5 a head. You didn't sell to him, did you? No, but I might have to. Oh, you'll do nothing of the sort. I'll get your crew back, and you'll have this herd moving by tomorrow morning. But how can you? Your two Mexican herders can keep the cattle quiet during the day. Uh, yes, I think they can. The herd's settled easy now. Knox, if you and your daughter will ride with me to Peacock Gulch, we'll find your men and persuade them to return. They'll also find out why they went there in the first place. But how can you persuade them to come back? I'll advance your father enough money to pay them. Would you, would you do that for me? Gladly. Toto. Oh, Kimasabi. Get a bar of silver from my saddlebag. Take it into town and get a change of the money. Um, me do it. When you've done that, pick up the trail of the stolen cattle and follow it. Uh, me find Rustler's trail. If you sight the Rustler's herd, send up a smoke signal. We'll be watching for it. Me do it. Me get bar of silver now. All right, let's mount and start for Peacock Gulf. Steady, easy, big fella. We can ride by and tell the Mexican herders where we're going. Steady, steady. steady. One silver there. Come on, get down. Get 
Meanwhile, Trigger Gun and Joe Curd returned to Clinton Springs and refreshed themselves at the Drover's Tavern. They saw Tonto come in with a bar of silver. When questioned, the Indian stated that the silver came from a friend's silver mine. The bar of silver was weighed and Tonto received the value in cash. Then he turned and walked toward the door. Come on, Joe. Where are you going, Trigger? I'm going to find out where that Indian's friend has his mine. Must be close around here. When the Lone Ranger with Rancher Knox and his daughter reached Peacock Gulch, they found the men from the Diamond Y searching for a trace of old Nugget Smith's mine. They were curious about the masked man. When Knox explained that he was the almost legendary figure known as the Lone Ranger, they were willing to accept his words as truth. The Lone Ranger quickly disillusioned all the cowhands. See, boys, there's no gold mine around here. This masked man knows old Nugget Smith. Nugget Smith is worthless. Ordinarily, he's a harmless man. However, this isn't the first time he's worked for swindlers. In this case, he told the story of his mind to get you men to leave the herd. But who'd hire him to do that? Whoever rustled your father's herd last night. I suspect it was Trigger Gun. How will we prove that? Perhaps we can't. But we may be able to find your stolen cattle. Mr. Knox, I'll admit we've been fools. But the boys were willing to fall for anything last night. They were mighty sore when you wouldn't advance them some spending cash. They wouldn't believe you didn't have it. If you boys will come back with me, I'll let bygones be bygones. And Dad will pay up what he owes you, thanks to the Lone Ranger. Hey, look, there's a smoke signal over there. Yes, it's Toto. He's found the stolen cattle. Glory be, I never expected it. Get mounted. Toto may need help. The rest of the Teddy Silver. Easy, easy, easy. Come on, kill me! When Tonto left the tavern in Clinton Springs, he rode out and soon picked up the trail of the stolen cattle. He was so intent on following it that he failed to notice the two horsemen who trailed him. When he rode a short distance into Box Canyon, he dismounted and built a signal fire. Then he heard hoofbeats approaching and turned to see two men who had their rifles trained on him. He glanced about in search of an avenue of escape, but realized he was trapped. Box Canyon was what its name implied. High walls towered on two sides and converged together at the north. At the south was the entrance through which he had come, and the two men blocked escape in that direction. He knew his only hope was the prompt arrival of the Lone Ranger. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, All right, now get your hands up, Injun. We want to talk to you. What you want? What's the idea of that signal fire? Me not tell. You won't talk, huh? Well, we have ways of making you talk. <laughs> When the Lone Ranger, with Dave Knox and his crew, reached the mouth of Box Canyon, the masked man signaled a halt. At the far end of the canyon, they saw the stolen cattle guarded by a handful of men, but the Lone Ranger was interested in the thin thread of unbroken smoke that rose from a bluff to the east, and he drew his field glasses. Isn't there Tonto up there with two men? Yes. The men with him are Trigger Gun and Joe Curry. We've got to act fast. They're going to torture him. What will we do? If we try to rest them, they'll use Tonto as a shield. That's right. We've got to fool them into thinking they can escape. But how can we fool Wait, them? Wait, I have a plan. Now listen closely. Now, Injun, I'm going to give you one more chance to talk. Me not talk. Trigger, I'll hold him while you... Hey, what's going on? Trigger, look, there's riders down in the valley. It's a Diamond Y bunch. They've trailed the herd. They're heading down the canyon to take over. Our boys down there won't stand a chance. Yeah, we won't stand a chance either if they catch sight of us up here in the bluff. Lucky for us, they've left the pass unguarded. Let's shoot this redskin and get out of no, here. No, no, a shot will attract attention. I'll take this engine along with us. Get on your horse there, engine. What are you taking him along for? I'm going to find out where that silver mine is, and he's going to tell us. Man, stay there. All right, head for that pass, engine. Remember, I have a rifle back of you. Now get going. Get, get, him get, him get him out. Get out. Get Tonto had noticed that the great horse Silver was not among those he had seen racing through the canyon toward the herd. And he made no objection to going with his captors, for he believed that the Lone Ranger had reasons for not showing himself. His firm confidence in his friend was rewarded as they reached the exit of the pass into Box Canyon. Hey! Oh, 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 oh. Tonto heard his captors under a startled cry and turned in the saddle to see a lariat snap taut about Joe's waist. As Joe was dragged from the saddle, the Lone Ranger stepped out from behind a rock to cover Trigger. Don't reach for your gun. Get him, Trigger. Let him have it. 
Oh, my hand. Again. Oh, my Shoot hand. Smash my hand. It looks like you got control oh, of things. Oh, my hand. What are you going to do now, gun us down? No. Where'd you come from, oh, anyway? Man. I thought you'd make a run for the pass when you saw the Diamond Wire men in the valley. Uh, Otto, take their guns and keep them covered. Uh, get them. I'll go help Knox and his crew. Easy, big fella. One, two, three. While Tonto watched Trigger and Joe, the Lone Ranger led Knox and his men to the rustler's hideout. They surrounded the outlaws and took them by complete surprise. There they are. Close them. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, close it on them. Right, you on. better surrender. We've got you surrounded. We've captured Joe and Trigger. You might as well give up. Trigger's men knew that with their leader captured and themselves surrounded, there was no use fighting. They threw down their guns and raised their hands. That does it, boys. Now tie these rustlers and we'll take them to the law. Then we'll move the herd from Box Canyon. All right. All right. I think your men will be loyal to you from now on, Knox. Well, sir, I, I guess I can't blame my boys for what they did. I might have believed that story Nugget Smith told about the gold myself. <laughs> yes, even Trigger Gunn believed that by following Tonto, he'd find a silver mine. <laughs> <laughs> he swallowed his own bait and got caught, thanks to you and Tonto. Our work here is done. Tonto and I will be going easy. Easy, easy, fella. Easy, fella. Well, I... I don't know what I'd have done without you, mister. I was sure a discouraged critter when you came along. We may meet again someday. Hasta la vista. Let's Hasta go, la vista. Come on, come on. Come on. Adios. Oh, Daddy. He was a true friend in need. <laughs> he, he's wonderful. Well, remember Daisy, honey. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.